Uh, well, the situation where I am right now, I'm at my house. Now we have about 15 people that are staying with us. Uh, outside of my house, uh, there's a small garden, and um, you probably have about 100 people staying there. Um, and so the situation still remains quite dire in the sense that people are very nervous about the situation and whether or not there are going to be more aftershocks like we had yesterday. And how are people being looked after by the Nepalese authorities at the moment? Well, right now, um, the Nepalese authorities are, are trying to deal with those that are most, uh, most at risk and most urgent. And so um, I hear routinely the helicopters going overhead uh, as I'm sure they're taking release supplies up into uh, the more hard-to-reach areas in order to make sure that people have the supplies and, and uh, necessities that they need. So that's the priority right now. Peter, is there a sense that the rest of the world now is trying to help as well? I, I get the sense that the rest of the world is trying to help, and it's, it's been very supportive. I mean, uh, raising this to attention is really important for all of us here just because it gives us motivation and uh, also some confidence in, in the work that we're doing. So we very much appreciate it. We've seen with disasters like this in the past, it's very hard at this stage to put numbers on things, whether it's the number of people who've been killed or injured. But the UN is saying a million children have been affected by the quake. Yes, that's, that's right. That's uh, in line with our estimates as well. And I think you're right. Numbers are very hard to put on uh, these types of situations. And I think that, um, you know, in, in all honesty, I think we're, we're really at the tip of the iceberg in terms of the number of casualties as well as those injured. I think that uh, the number is going to rise day by day. In recent history, we've seen earthquakes in the likes of Haiti, in Pakistan as well, places that perhaps weren't prepared to deal with this kind of thing. How well prepared was Nepal? I think that Nepal uh, was, was not necessarily very well prepared. They had, uh, I think a lot of the aid agencies had things pre-positioned in the case of an earthquake. But I think that in these types of situations, no one can be really fully prepared because uh, the, the emotional impact of it require a lot more support. And, and that's one of the areas where we're focusing. Peter Oilo in Kathmandu, thanks very much indeed for joining us today.